Uh, I am a filmmaker. I do reside in Atlanta from Minneapolis. My husband, Kevin Marshall Pinkney, is here. He is an actor. He's from Chicago. Um, he lives in uh, Atlanta with me too, obviously, and he works on TV show MacGyver. Um, what else do I need? Um, I have been everywhere. I met Kelly several years ago. Uh, I came to Los Angeles to edit a film of hers. Uh, we didn't get it edited. We did everything else but edit that film. Um, and we just became really, really good friends. So when she told me she was going to put on this festival, I had to come out and support my sister because I believe in supporting people. Um, I have worked at the American Black Film Festival as the talent manager uh, in the PR perspective for every celebrity that walks into that festival. I manage all their interviews. Uh, I have worked at the Cannes Film Festival in PR, uh, did PR for Jackie Chan, um, several other people. Um, I worked, when I lived in LA with Kevin, I worked for Film Independent. So I did uh, PR for the Spirit Awards at LA Film Festival. Um, I also worked for Urban World in New York, um, where I managed uh, all the volunteers and registration. So I've worked at a, a lot of amazing film festivals. Any festival I have not worked at or been to, my husband Kevin has, which is like Sundance in Toronto. Um, he's also worked for Cannes. So I've been all over the world. And then uh, in my personal day-to-day -day life, I work as a brand manager. Um, I've worked with Floyd Mayweather. I branded his entire 40th birthday party. Uh, I work with MC Light. She's my main client. Um, I work with Coco Clements from SWV, um, several other people. Um, so I create a million dollar brands for people. And then also, I am a filmmaker. Um, I prefer to write psychological thrillers, however, I'm probably better at writing comedic romance comedies, um, even though I want to be known as a person who writes psychological thrillers. But um, that's, a, that's a little bit about my, my, my story. I'm, I'm more of a Q&A girl, so I encourage you to toss out a million questions, especially people who are entering their projects and festivals or who want to know how to manage a personal brand. Those are my wheelhouse, and I have a plethora of answers if you have questions. So. Go for it. I actually, uh, that first book was awful. It was called Killer in the Night. And I was like, because I'm like old, so I'm 39, so those of us who are in their 30s or 40s, we know about Fear Street and R.L. Stein, right? So I was super into that, and so I decided to write this terrible book called Killer in the Night, and I utilized every single person in my class as a suspect or victim, and I wrote this crazy story, it ended up being like, I want to say like 170 pages, and it was just like all about everybody in my class. Some girl had found some gloves in the woods uh, that had blood on them, and she saw some dude with an axe, and we didn't know who it was. And it was a thing where it could have been one of our classmates. I was going to pick one who was going to be the killer. I actually have no idea who was the killer in the end, but I wrote that. And then from there, I wrote, we just published our first um, book, my husband and I, um, a year and a half ago. Uh, called Before I Do. It's a bucket list book for things couples should do before they get married. Um, and then other than that, I'm starting to go back into my roots of navigating the young adult um, genre. And I'm working on a book called Between Moon and Sky about a guy who is struck by lightning and he almost dies, but he doesn't. And so he begins to see that there's a layer of life between, you know, what we see and basically there's angels and demons that walk among us um, and he can see them now because we're struck by lightning. So it'll be a young adult novel, so. And it'll also probably be a film because I'm very, as a brand manager, I know that you need to kind of, you know, put your, your feelers everywhere. Film and books are, are very closely related and tied, so you want to get into that genre, that brand, so. Yeah? Um, I'm not sure if I'm conservative the brand Everybody in this room, I don't care who you are, your brand is the most important thing that you are ever going to create. And the brand is you. So if you want to motivate people to work with you, you need to motivate people to like you. 
because you are a walking poster. You're your brand. So what I would tell you is whoever you are, don't try to be somebody or not, but figure out how to best highlight who you are on all your social channels. I noticed like myself, um, I created a brand called Go Right for Film. Um, if you haven't followed it on Instagram, follow it. Um, and I basically took that brand and I started highlighting filmmakers all over Atlanta um, and who they are and I watched how it grew. Just by putting up these different projects, now people see me as this person that is a support for filmmakers. So it's become easier for me to go out there and say, hey, I have a project I want to produce. Will you help me? Well, they see that I, I'm a brand manager. They see that I create brands. I do these different things. So now my brand is, is escalating, right? It's going up. You need to do the same thing for yourself. I think that one of the biggest things that filmmakers, writers, writers especially do is we pigeonhole ourselves into only wanting to hide behind our words or hide behind our computer. And we don't realize that you have to get out there. You have to shake hands. You have to network. You have to have those conversations with people. People are only going to work with you if they can find you if they know what you're doing. So put yourself out there so that people see your brand are attracted to the kind of projects that you make and you'll be fine. It'll be easy. You're welcome. Go ahead. My question kind of piggybacks off of his, whereas with the advances in internet technologies and social media platforms, it seems like there's a sea of noise out there with everybody trying to be an influencer and trying to get recognized and kind of get, trying to get the light shown upon them. Can you dive into some of the tactical execution strategies that you use from a branding perspective to get in front of the right people to make sure that you're seen and heard? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I'll be honest with you. Yes, there's a lot of noise, but there's not a lot of good noise. And the people that you're trying to attract, which are people who are investors or people who are executive producers, uh, people who are development directors, they have a very good eye at discerning who is what's good noise and what's bad noise. What you have to do is exactly what you did with your film. Keep creating great content. But at the same time, don't just create content to distribute to festivals. You need to also now try to create content to distribute through your social channels, whether that's YouTube, Vimeo, I highly recommend Instagram and Facebook. Start putting out little small micro content that you can push out there and people will see that. Um, I want to also tell you guys too, um, to kind of think back off of that. When you do that and you are building a name for yourself and your brand, when you enter festivals like Sundance or Cannes or whatever, the true reality is, is that these festival programmers already know who you are before you enter. They get about 15,000 submissions a year at Sundance, hypothetically. And it's not by it's not by design. You can make the greatest film on earth, but if they have no idea who you are, they can't market that. So that's why your brand, what you were saying, and what you're saying is, is is highly important. That's why it's important for you to get into the noise. You don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to be able to rise to the top. You will because what I saw with your film, which I love, you already have. It. You know how to create a good product. You just have to get that product in front of the right people. Utilize those hashtags. And then at the same time, get a PR campaign on yourself. Put some kind of press release. If you don't know how, go online, Google how to write a press release. Put it out there. Then um, the next thing I would do, this is, this is cheap PR that you can do for yourself. Go to every small blog all across the world. You have to go outside of your, your state, outside of your city, and distribute that press release to all these people so that your, your film, whether it's a trailer, a short, whatever, starts making its mark on the internet. People who sit around all day, like she said, she watches films all day, that's what they do. There are people out there who are literary agents, who are development directors that are looking for people like you, people like you who are hot new filmmakers, and they will find your project, but you have to put it out there. You can't be concerned with who is doing something on this side of the street and who's doing something on that side of the street. You have to only be concerned with yourself, you have to develop that tunnel vision, and you have to keep constantly creating content and getting it out there, no matter what. Thank you. Hi. Hope that answers. Yep. Hi. Yes.
Absolutely. Unknown writers. Unknown writers. Okay, that's a great question. Number one, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, this is for everybody. No, I want to start with the basics. I meet a lot of people who say they're screenwriters. I went and actually got my degree in screenwriting, and I, I really believe in my heart I'm an incredible screenwriter. So with that being said, uh, I believe a, education is important. If you can't go to college to get an education to be a screenwriter, that's fine. There are millions of books out there. Robert McKee wrote Story, Sid Field. You're going to find what you need. Before you even start focusing on trying to meet people to read your spec script, make sure it's in the proper format. Because what happens when you submit to film festivals, and a lot of people don't know this, but when you submit to Sundance, when you submit to Cannes, when you submit to Urban World, American Black Film Festival, and so on and so forth, when you submit something, like say for a screenplay competition, and it is not in the proper format, number one, you go in a database. And it's the same thing if you have a film. You go in a database, where basically they say, we've got 15,000 submissions, this person keeps submitting the same, you know, keep submitting a film. We watched a film last year, I don't have time to watch 15,000, they're already on the list. So if I find the time, I'll watch it. But right now, you're on a list that says I won't watch it. So that's number one. Make sure that if you are pushing anything out there, that it is 100% your best, and it's the standard. Number two, do not sleep on going to film festivals and shaking hands with every single person in that room. Doesn't matter, you have no idea who your next executive producer is, who the next development director is, you have no idea who any literary, literary agent is. And a lot of times, people forget that when you're in a relationship with someone who's gonna be your executive producer for your spec script or your literary agent, they have to like you. So to create that likable relationship, you need to start by shaking those hands. You need to be where film is. And you guys, you came from New Orleans, right? You have enough of an industry out there where I'm pretty sure they put on a bunch of different events, like I know the Preston City Film Festival is down there. Uh, it should be coming around again. My friend Quan Latif, she created that. You want to start showing up in those rooms and shaking hands with all those right people. And eventually, when you create that bubble for yourself, people are like, okay, she, this sister's this working on this, it, the conversation will continue when you walk out of the room. And you, you, I really believe that the universe will help you connect with who you need to connect with to get your project out there. But start first with networking. Another thing I would tell you too is LinkedIn. Don't sleep on it. We have a friend um, who went on LinkedIn. He works on a TV show Ambitions by Will Packer now. He's a writer. And he went on LinkedIn several years ago and he started looking at all the story developers for every single uh, TV show that's out there. And he literally inboxed all of them. A few of them actually responded. And he started going on coffee dates, but that's how he started writing for television, because of LinkedIn. So utilize that. Another thing that I do is I go and I have IMDb Pro. So when I have like a certain script that I, I have and I'm like, okay, this is great, Christopher Nolan would like it. Uh, number one, I would never send it to him. Why? Because everything Christopher Nolan produces, he wrote. So I would look to see who produced a Christopher Nolan film, and I would start submitting, I would send a query letter simply because I found that information on, on IMDb Pro. And I would just, you know, put my feelers out there. I always create uh, posters for whatever script I write. I create a pitch deck for whatever script I write. And I send those things out, along with a, a query letter or one sheet, whatever it could be. And if they like it and they ask for the script, I send it to them. But I would start there. It's, I highly believe it's extremely easy to reach every single person that you want to reach to get your project out there. It just takes persistence. Uh, consistency, consistency, and hard work. So, hope that answers your question. Anybody else? Yes. Okay, I'm going to be long winded. Go for it. Long winded. So, I'm going to work on my first feature, but I know that I'm in a very early stage, so I know it's going to be a very long process. And from a testament to the end of this festival, like, and it's a short film, so I know that you know there's no real market or distribution plan for like. But what I want to do is, when I release the film at this festival, I want it to have a long shelf life. Like, I don't just want to go to YouTube and just get, you know, a couple hundred views and then all of a sudden from each other's dead. You know, all the tall work is it's just done with. Like, how do I build life to where in, in post film festival life or from hotel so that, you know, it doesn't just get a few views and just die off. How do I kind of strategically release it to where it has some energy even after the festival season? Um, especially considering that my next project, 
won't, you know, be finished for a long time. I don't even want to strike the director and the filmmaker. I don't even want to lose, um, I guess, okay. my presence in the okay. industry. Okay, um, okay. Um, to answer your question, to answer your question, <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, what I what I would do is the following. Number one, um, if you don't have a social media channel for it, create one. Uh, create an Instagram for the Pro Motel. That's number one. Number two, start releasing stills. Number three, release uh, interviews with the cast. Uh, also release interviews with you talking about Pro Motel. Uh, do that. Uh, do it on um, IGTV and Instagram and Facebook. Uh, just distribute it also on your YouTube channel for your production company. Uh, and then also distribute it on Medium because don't sleep on that. People are on that that um, that platform. Uh, number five, uh, I would not distribute it from your channel. I would contact Easter Rays, uh, Color Creative. She every Sunday, I believe, she releases a um, different short film from a different filmmaker. But what I want you to do first is raise your profile for the project mm -hmm. so that when you submit it to Easter Ray, she already has eyes on it. She knows that you have it out there. So, and she sees that there's an audience for it. So raise the profile of the project first through personal branding, branding the film and social media, okay? So do that. If it doesn't work with her, then go to a different, go to Pitch, what is it, Pitchfork TV. There's a bunch of other, um, UMC, uh, what is that, Urban Movie Channel. They also distribute um, shorts and then also Amazon. You guys can put your short films on Amazon. You can put yours on Amazon. If you don't already put it on Amazon Prime, uh, so start doing that, get a distribution deal with them because they want short form content all day and half the night. Uh, so do that. You can put it out on your own, but it's not going to gain as much traction right. if you don't. But if, if you use somebody who already has the platform that you're looking for, it'll drive that traffic back to you. Uh, I encourage you to do that. People like the Duffer Brothers they, who made Stranger Things. Uh, he, they, they got their start with short films, right? And they put them in festivals and now, and then they ended up working on a TV show called Wayward Pines as a writer while they were developing uh, Stranger Things. And because of the relationship that they got <coughs> from film festivals, they were able to get that job and then that job took them to be able to have the meetings that they needed to have to be able to say, we have this cool idea called Stranger Things. So you want to go the same route. It works for everyone, it'll work for you but raise that profile before you even think about putting it on the platform, otherwise we'll die on YouTube right. and go to order. Can you tell me the name of that Issa Rae uh, it's, it's like Issa Rae is, what is it called, Kevin? Um, the Sunday, yeah. huh? Color Creator. Yeah, Issa Rae Represents. Issa Rae Represents, and yeah, it's just shorts, and it comes, and you can go right on YouTube, Issa Rae Represents, but she puts out shorts literally like every Sunday, and that's where you want to distribute that, definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. I just want to add, there's another great website called Short of the Week. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Isn't yeah. it on Prime? It's on Amazon too, right? Um, it might be, yeah, but it's already got a stuff on the blog. Um, yeah. And it's sort of from all around the world. And the stuff that's on there is great. And the people who on there, like, I know a lot of teacher friends who use that uh, in their classes. You know, college professors who use that in their classes because it's a nice, short, you know, compact and picture of our students. That is true. And then to, to give you more of a layer of what I think you should do with your film is you should also contact a bunch of different uh, nonprofits that help women who have been trafficked, other different types of things, and raise the profile for that project by doing that. Um, license it to companies, it'll also raise the profile. Like the key here is to really be able to, I mean, we're not doing this for a hobby. Nobody who came to this festival is trying to be a hobby filmmaker. We're trying to really be filmmakers, right? So that really just means that you have to start thinking with a business mindset. You have to think like, a, you have to think like Ted Sarantos from, from Netflix. It's, it's the season for that. Those are the people that are rising to the top. The people who are thinking beyond just this short film. The people who are thinking, how can I monetize this short film? And that's what I want you to think about with Pro Motel. That's what I want you to think about. That's what I want you to think about. How do I monetize? How do I take this product that I made and give
get my money back, get a return on my investment. That's not just the money you spent, but the time that you spent. And how do I take that monetization and turn it into opportunities outside of this window of Pro Hotel or your film? Like, you gotta think like that because that's what your, your noise makers and your competition, that's what they're already sitting there doing every day. Also, you could look at Shorts TV. I got another short film distributed by them and they broadcast on DirecTV and Uverse and uh, my deal is for North American rights. So, and they'll pay you a licensing fee. So you check, check out Schwartz TV. As far as um, licensing to like nonprofits and stuff like that, what would be like the standard licensing fee that we should be, you know, uh, trying to get for our short films if we're going that route? Everybody has a different licensing fee, I think what you should focus on is the length of time that you allow them to license it, and then also find out how you track how many views or hits that guy. You're going to want to find a booking manager, really. Uh, I don't do that, so I can't really answer like what you should get as far as like monetizing it with the finances, but I know that you should do it. I know you both should do it. It's, it's really that, that name of the game right now. That's where we're going when it comes to this industry. Companies all over the world are licensing our projects because they don't have enough content to create themselves, so they need people like you that already have the content to push it out there so that they can grow their brand. So just find somebody who's already got a brand, um, whether it is, like I said, a trafficking nonprofit or anything like that along that line. Same thing with you, your story, you could license that. What is your, what is your nationality? Hispanic. You could be like, Univision, you could be licensing that to Univision. You could be, you look like literally, like there's a whole, there's a, um, HBO does a, um, they have a Hispanic initiative. Uh, I know that because um, they would do the contest at um, ABFF every year. Okay. And I know, I talked to the lady who heads up that diversity program. They have a Hispanic initiative. They're looking for films by Hispanic filmmakers to give you money. Like you gotta, you gotta, you wanna really make that segue and get in those right rooms and in those right arenas so that you can really, you can really go where you're trying to go. Because I mean, you got, you, we, 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 we on, mm -hmm. just won, you know, the Oscar. You, they, they need you. Like right. you of all, you, the lane is wide open. It's wide open, and you, you know that because when you see these award ceremonies, it's always the same three, right? Yeah. Alfonso, uh, what is it, Inari mm -hmm. uh and Guillermo. It's just yeah. three. There is no competition for them. It's, it's your turn. It's your turn. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Get them to give you all the information that you're looking for. 
and then you go and you find somebody who can write a grant. I'm pretty sure if you can't find anybody, you go on Fiverr and find somebody who's a grant writer. Fiverr has everything, uh, you know, anything that you want. So find, find that and then put together a package for your project. What does this project look like? Uh, create a, a poster, create a, 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 demo, a demo reel for it, um, create a pitch deck. Um, it's like six, seven pages, and it'll have like what the synopsis is, who the who the proposed cast would be if you had the, the right amount of money that you wanted for that cast. Um, what are your comparable films that, um, and how much money did they make? How much did it cost to produce that uh, project? And then also um, the bios of whoever you have involved as far as the crew is concerned. Um, then create a one sheet, which would be a mini version of that, and push that stuff out there, and you 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 can't lose. When people see that you've done all that work, that says something to them. And when you also have that raised profile where you're in a relationship with people, they know who you are, it's harder to tell someone you know, no. It's easy to tell someone you've never heard of, no. Easy. Anybody else? And those are the people who are running that festival. 
Okay, so let me ask you this. I feel like I have a pretty charismatic attitude and just approach to myself that makes me likable, but I guess my ultimate question is, how do I become someone who shakes your hand and not just with the person that's like, oh, I have this project, and they forget about me because two seconds later somebody else comes to me and say, oh, I have this project, and at the end of the day, they have a hundred people come to me and say, oh, I have this project. How do they remember me the next year and say, oh, that was Chris Jones. He, he spoke about this. I remember that year, you know? Well, number one, you're never going to have a problem with people forgetting you if you push that out. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. You're never going to have a problem. People who have a problem are people who talk but don't produce. There are always going to be a million people that come behind you and shake hands. But as filmmakers, what we have to really get into the sphere of understanding is that what we create is the stand. Not what we say. What we create. Just keep creating and keep showing up in the room. And people will see what you have created and they will never forget who you are. You don't have a problem. You just have to do a little more work. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And only follow up. Yeah. You just said, and one of the three, I don't know, Instagram, send a message to anybody here. You know, always follow up with it. Um, I know I say like a lot of film festivals have those um, volunteer opportunities, which are great for emerging filmmakers and students. You know, you get to dedicate yourself to volunteer. Because a 
Unfortunately, as filmmakers, we want to be seen. We want to be loved. We want our art to be loved. So we submit to these festivals that we believe will help raise our profile. Um, festivals that we believe will, will help excel us in our, our mission to create art and have it appreciated by our audience. So that's, that's why I submit, and I hope in my heart that others are the same. But they're submitting because they want to create art that is appreciated. So that's always the driving force for me, and I'm pretty sure for others who submit to festivals. Now, how many submissions you get is about how much noise the festival is able to make. Um, you have to, like I always say, network outside of your comfort zone. That comfort zone is what we can put our arms around, what we can reach. You want to network globally to be able to reach more people that want to have their work and art appreciated at a festival. Well, do you think that it should not just be like for me, in particular with the Cater Film Festival, not? Because, like I told you guys earlier, when I started to find other people from other states, when I specifically tried to make it with tourism, and I went to the customer's branch. So I was trying to help Louisiana, like come to Louisiana and make more movies here. So if you live here or want to make a film out here, then this is that film festival. But when I started seeing other people like they and they come from Chicago and then Arizona, they want to be a part of it. And I'm like, well, this is growing faster than I thought, and it's got to be open to the whole United States. But I feel like maybe it should be to international. You can. Uh, 
um, you're at that age where you, you your mind is working better than most of us because you're always constantly probably inventing things. Just push it out there and don't worry about if it's your best work because your best is yet to come. But get it out there. Always. Anybody else? Get out of here. You've been very informative. I appreciate everything you've done. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.